because we are kings and our words matter. God raised him back up from the dead and raised him all the way to the heavenly places and made him sit at the right hand of God as the representative of mankind so that we have a high priest who's touched with the feelings of our infirmity forever. A man is sitting there representing man, speaking for man on behalf of man in the very presence of God. The steadfast love of the We rejected these blessings. We talked against these blessings. We said, oh, we don't want all these blessings. We don't want all this, you know. We don't want nothing from God, you know. But God says, I have prepared all these things before the foundation of the world and kept them ready. There's no takers. You see, nobody to take it, nobody to believe it, nobody to comprehend it. Now, why people didn't want to take it is because they thought, well, how self selfish of me. I don't want to have all those things, you know. Why, you know, why should God bless me in such a way? Look at all the whole world. How, how many people are suffering? Let him bless those people, you know. But, you know, they don't understand that God has got enough for everybody. Right? <laughs> God has not got only so much uh, so that, uh, you know, he's got to take from you and give to somebody. No. That's not God. God says, I got enough for everybody. 
to make every man like a king i got i got enough for everybody people didn't never understood that people thought you know if i ask something from god and believe for great things that will be very selfish that will be very worldly that will be fleshly carnal and so on no it will bring glory to god then how can it be carnal it will if it will bring great joy to god and praise and honor to god like the bible says how will it be carnal it has a spiritual impact upon the world see this is where we missed it we fail to make that impact in the world and make it as a means of attracting the world we have a wonderful message but when we preach the message we've got to live it you see the message is this that there is a god that loves us and out of his love has prepared things that beyond that is beyond our comprehension and has brought it to us through jesus christ he has put it all in jesus christ and brought it to us but that message has to be lived out and be seen so that people may be attracted to the things of god now let me ask you to turn with me to 1 corinthians 2 we'll just go in there right now 1 corinthians chapter 2 Let's go start with verse 6 and let me first give you the idea of what he's talking about. What 1 Corinthians 1 and 2 is all about. From 1 Corinthians around 18th verse, Paul is talking about his preaching. What his preaching contains. What is the Christian message all about? What do we have to share with the world? Paul says, this is what I preach. And that's the statement he's making from verse 18 onwards in first chapter. Then in second chapter, don't let the chapter divisions bother you. This is a letter, right? And the chapter divisions and verse divisions are given there so that it will be convenient for us to turn to it. So I can say to you, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. You can go exactly to the word where I will start reading, right? That's why chapter divisions are made, verse divisions are made. When Paul wrote the letter, he didn't say chapter 1. I don't write a letter like that, you know, chapter 1, verse 1, you know. dearly beloved you know no no not like that we just write a letter this is a letter so it, the message just continues you know it just continues in chapter 2 well, let me read from verse 4 and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men but in the power of god however we speak wisdom among those who are mature yet not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Now again, once again here, we have before the foundation of the world. I showed you many verses that talks about what happened before the foundation of the world, what God has done for us and prepared for us. And here is another verse. This is talking about Paul saying, that he is, his preaching is about the wisdom of God. He's preaching the wisdom of God, which is a mystery to others. It's a hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Every word is important. Everybody say for our glory. Now we talk so much about God's glory, then we forget that God wants to glorify us. Not only God wants to get glory, but he wants to glorify us in one way. There is a glory that he wants to give to us. For our glory, he has prepared some things. Hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages, for before the foundation of the world, in other words, for our glory. This is a mystery to others. And this is what we are preaching. That's the essence of what Paul is saying. He says, my Christian preaching is about this. I'm preaching about what God has prepared before the foundation of the world. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what any human heart has ever comprehended. No, not, no one but God has comprehended these things. But now the Spirit of God is revealing them to us and I am preaching the revelation of these things that have been prepared by God before the foundation of the world, which is largely a mystery to the rest of the world. It is a hidden wisdom, but now it is revealed to us. That's, that's the essence of what he's talking. Now read the next verse which none of the rulers of this age knew. For, they, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord. Amazing, isn't it? They didn't know. The wise men of this world did not know the wisdom of God. What is the wisdom of God that it's talking about? 
it is talking about the wisdom of God which put all the blessings in Christ Jesus. That is why when Adam sinned and blew it all up for us, it didn't matter because Adam, now, Adam is not the last person, you know. Christ is there. It is Christ in whom God has placed all the blessings. So Adam cannot lose it for us. Christ is going to bring it to us. You see? So the wisdom of God is this. That he has planned the blessings. He has prepared the blessings. And he has put it in Christ who is the divine person. The second person of the blessed holy trinity. He has put it in this divine person who cannot fail. Who cannot make a blunder like Adam. Who cannot let us down. Who cannot lose it for us. Who will secure it for us. For all eternity. The blessings of God will forever be safe in his hands. He put it in him. If it's in him, it can never be lost. If it's in him, it is yea and amen in Christ Jesus. The Bible says all the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Because in Christ Jesus, you never lose it. Another thing that I remember is Titus 1, 1 and 2 says that all the promises were made before the foundation of the world. Now let me ask you, if the promises were made before the foundation of the world, to whom was the promises made? We were not there. Some of us are not even 50 years old. But the promises were made before the foundation of the world. To whom did he make it before the foundation of the world? Before the foundation of the world means before Adam was even there. The first man was even there. Because God made the world first and then Adam. But the promises were made before the foundation of the world. I'll tell you to whom it was made. It was made to Jesus Christ as a representative of mankind. Knowing that he was going to take humanity for himself. Upon himself. And is going to come down as a man. And thereafter throughout all eternity will retain humanity. And be a man seated at the right hand of God. God made the promises. Concerning eternal life. All the promises were made to him. In the eternity past. Before the first man ever came into being. Now that will get rid of all your condemnation business. You know. The devil comes and tells you. Well look at you you know. You're a big sinner. You know you did this. You're not right. You're not this. You're not that. You tell him. Devil before you were ever made. I was in God's heart and mind before the foundation of the world. God prepared the blessing and he has put it in Jesus Christ and he has promised eternal life to him and he carries it out and he is the guarantor of that eternal life. It was promised to him. It is yea and amen in and through Jesus Christ. Oh, that just thrills me. I just feel like I'm going to fly away. How can I lose it? How can I miss it, my friend? This is the great message that we have. This is what Christianity is all about. That there is a God that loves you much more than any love that you have ever experienced in this world. One of the problems with people is that they are lovesick people. They don't find love in this world. They're disappointed with their relationship. They're disappointed with human failures. That is why you must trust in God because there is a God who will never let you down. Who loves you before, from before the foundation of the world. Before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. He knew you and he loves you. And he has prepared the blessings for you. That your eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Your mind cannot comprehend except with the, Holy, with the help of the Holy Spirit. That's how much God loves you. The only way you're going to walk in joy and peace and happiness. Is when you come to know this God. That has prepared this much for you. And understand his great love for you. Amen. So this is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God put it all in Christ. That's very smart. Because he knew that man will lose it. Man will make a blunder. He put it all in Christ. And then sent Christ in the form of a man. To deliver it to us. To live among men. To be the representative man. And the carrier of all the blessings of God. And as a representative man. He carried in himself. All the blessings that belong to the entire humanity. The human race. Hello. That is why the Bible says. That salvation in no other name. Other than the name of Jesus. 
that is why healing is in his name deliverance in his name he is that's why he said in my name you cast out devils that is why he has been given a name above every name that is why prayers are offered in his name even thanksgiving paul says paul never thanks god without mentioning jesus christ he doesn't say thanks be to god our father no he says thanks be to god god our father through our lord jesus christ that's a very important thing there it's always through our lord he goes through proper channels he addresses god properly when we pray we pray to god the father through jesus christ because if you leave out jesus christ you have no access at all if you leave out jesus you have nothing because everything is in him and through him so that's why even thanksgiving he just wants to say thanks but he says through our lord jesus christ because it came everything came through jesus christ now this is the mystery that was hidden this is the mystery that the world didn't understand because they didn't understand they crucified him otherwise they would not have crucified him see wonderful see god hid it so that nobody could see it nobody could see that he was the one that was bringing the blessings to mankind they hated him and they put him on the cross and nailed him to the cross and killed him and they thought it's over the devil thought he has had his heyday and it's over the tormentor of the devil is dead now they thought on the cross of calvary but it was not so god raised him back up from the dead and raised him all the way to the heavenly places and made him sit at the right hand of god as the representative of mankind so that we have a high priest who's touched with the feelings of our infirmity forever a man is sitting there representing man speaking for man on behalf of man in the very presence of god they didn't know that this was going to happen then the blood of jesus christ that was shed for us was sprinkled to the hearts of people that believed on him therefore the heart was now made ready as the temple of the holy spirit and the temple of god so that jesus can come and now dwell in the hearts of people that's why paul says christ in you the hope of glory he says christ is in you verse 9 but as it is written So verse 6 says this is the wisdom we preach not the wisdom of this age verse 7 says it's the hit, hidden wisdom it's a mystery to the world but it has been ordained before the ages for our glory verse 8 says none of the rulers of this world knew this had they known they would not have crucified the lord now look at verse 9 but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him everybody say the things everybody understands things they will say i need to buy these things oh if i had these things i got to get those things i can't do without these things that's the things it's talking about the things everybody say the things again the things which god has prepared for them things that belong to the spiritual mental emotional family life financial work of hands things that belong to every aspect of our lives the things that have to do with every aspect every area of our lives things means everything everything that you and i will ever need god has prepared that's what it's talking about the things which god has prepared for the means that there is nothing left out everything was prepared for us and no eye has ever seen no ear has ever heard no heart has ever understood the things which god has prepared for us that is why jesus taught in the sermon on the mount when we are teaching it tuesday nights we are going to come to that portion one of these days and i'm going to teach it very strongly and it says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you you see we are not preaching about how to get you know we are not preaching about going after things because the bible doesn't teach it like that that would be wrong to teach it in that way we don't advocate going after things we preach about seeking first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and the things are in that package things come with it we don't go after things see that's the difference between the world and us 
the world goes after things but the things are all in christ hello no wonder they become so sick and tired of life no no wonder they become so vexed no wonder they become worn out at the end of the day no wonder they are tired of their life and the way they run it but they get exhausted because without christ it becomes a tedious job it just you just never get it you never get it the way that god has it for you it is all in jesus christ seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so we preach not about going and getting things we preach about seeking first the kingdom of god then all these things your needs will be met everything that you'll ever need is there in that it is all in christ see this is what god has done god has put all the blessings in christ according to ephesians 1:3 in the heavenly places in christ jesus right before the foundation of the world he put it all in and then that jesus came down died for us on the cross why did he die as it is written cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree jesus christ became cursed for us eh so that the blessing of abraham may come upon all of us right so when he died on the cross it was to open the way so that the blessing of abraham can reach every last person in the world that is why jesus came that is why he died on the cross right now our hearts have been sprinkled with the blood of jesus made clean become the temple of god now jesus comes and dwells in us if jesus dwells in you and if jesus has in him all the blessings everything that god has prepared before the foundation of the world then i say to you all things that you ever need is inside of you the path of the righteous is like the light of dawning it shines brighter and brighter and brighter till the noon of day that's how it gets you know that's how truth is you get to know the truth and lightly see it you see it in a small way but then the light increases there's more and more light and enlightenment and it gets to the peak so i'm glad some of us are beginning to see it everything that you will ever need all things that you ever need is in christ and christ is in you the whole kingdom of god and the blessings of the kingdom is in you the kingdom of god is within you you don't have to go here and there to look for blessings all that you need for your life in every area of your life is inside of you that's why jesus when he talked about seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness all these things shall be added to you you know what context he said that in the verses previous to that says do not worry about what you will eat what you will drink or what you will be clothed with for the gentiles seek after these things there's a difference between those who don't know god and those who know god what are the ones that don't know god doing they worry that's their trademark hello <laughs> why they worry i can understand very well their worry because they have no other way if they got a need they just have to worry if they've got a problem they just have to worry if the husband and wife are fighting they just have to sit down and cry and worry they just don't have no answers if they're in a financial problem they just worry if they're sick they just worry they just worry they they have they have no answer in sight they have no knowledge of god therefore they cannot see their answer in jesus christ so all they can do is worry and the second thing is they go after these things see that's the whole world people that don't know god the gentiles seek after these things gentiles in those days meant the people that don't know god the israelites versus the gentiles israelites were the ones that knew god the others were gentiles they didn't know god they seek after these things see the whole world is about that seeking after things going after things we are not like the world we are not going after things we are going after god our heart is after god our desire is after god but all these things are in christ the world is seeking things they seek after those things the bible says and then jesus said your heavenly father but your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things how many of you know that whatever you need your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things 
that he already knows. Don't think that you're for the first time informing God about what you need. Then he's not God. He knows already what you need. You know. He know, he's, he's omniscient. He knows everything. In and out. Happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away. 